It was a chaotic day one of free agency, and while some teams are uber aggressive to get that big fish, other teams like the Dallas Stars leave you scratching your head and now asking, have the Dallas Stars taken a massive step back? Let's break it down next on Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy Stars fans, welcome back to another episode of Locked on Stars, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every single day. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm Joey Erickson, former producer of 105 Through the Fan. Please be sure to subscribe. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for making us a part of your day and making us your first listen. There's nothing quite like the urgency of free agency, constantly scrolling your Twitter, updating it to see the deals coming in second by second. It is a day that brings so much hope, so much anticipation to make your roster better, to address your needs. And then the Dallas Stars gave us whatever that was today. And that's what we're here to discuss on today's episode of Locked on Stars. Many and I mean multiple, questionable decisions were made by general manager Jim Nill and the Dallas Stars. Not all of them bad, but boy, are there some head scratchers in there. And now many of you are asking, have the Dallas Stars taken a step back? We're going to try to answer that today on today's episode. So buckle up, Stars fans. It's a free agency special here today. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as playoffs wind down. The sports stop sports and like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. I don't know how to sugarcoat it today, Stars fans. So I'm going to go out and say it. I think this was... A really, really bad day for the Dallas Stars. I don't think it was very good. If I had to to give them a grade, I would tell them to look down at their sweaters. A big fat D is what I would give the Dallas Stars. Many, many multiple questionable decisions after buying out the contract of Ryan Suter after having to move Chris Tanev because there was no way in hell they were going to give him six years at the age of 35. You have this cap space, some wiggle room to go out and get a big fish and not necessarily overpay. There were some crazy contracts. There was a lot of money spent today in free agency. I'll give them that. There was some numbers out there. There was just no way Dallas was going to come even close to any of those numbers, but there was some phenomenal talent out there to finally address the the huge elephant in the room. And now you have Stars fans wanting Ryan Suter back. That's how poor of a day one it was in free agency for the Dallas Stars. And look, I'm going to try to reserve some of this emotional take for like a month into the season because who knows how it's all going to shape out, but I feel the need to at least give my opinion. And I just did not like replacing Ryan Suter and Chris Tanev with Dumba, Smith, and Labushkin. All players that have not had great seasons at least last year, including Dumba and Labushkin, just does not feel like the right acquisitions that the Dallas Stars need to compete. And I just listened to general manager Jim Nill and his post-free agency press conference. And to me, it really felt like they're sort of passing the problem down the line because they're going to have to pay guys like Johnston, like Maverick Bork, like Stan Coven, and many others. That's at least what I sort of got out of the press conference. 
It was all about term and money for the stars. They were really looking for a fit. And the theme of their three acquisitions, specifically on defense, Matt Dumba, Smith, and Labushkin, physical defensemen that are very competitive. And I can I can seed them that ground. I thought Dallas needs to get bigger. They need to get a little tougher. And Dumba does that. Labushkin is really physical. So is Smith. He, he's a bigger guy. I, I can see them that ground, but I just, I frankly don't think they're very good players at this point in time. And I also will see to them this. They didn't have a ton of options. They whiffed on some of the bigger names like Matt Roy, like Pesci, like Shea, and some of that is to no fault of your of their own. Some of those contracts were huge, but you look at someone like Sean Walker. Sean Walker signed less than Dumba. Sean Walker signed less than Matt Dumba. And that's where a lot of my critiques come in is just the numbers for someone like Dumba who really regressed this past season. Tampa had to hide him. Labushkin had a decent, decent run with Toronto because he actually played with Morgan Riley, who of course is a really, really talented defenseman who could probably hide some of his, uh, his weaknesses. And he played all right in Toronto, but, but wasn't fantastic. Uh, Smith is, is a guy that really is your sixth to seventh defenseman. And frankly, my honest opinion on Dumba, Smith, and Labushkin is on a true contender. I think all three of these guys, you would want to be your sixth to seventh defenseman. That's that's where I stand right now on July 1st at this moment. And this can change down the road. And look, I know Leon Bixel is a part of the future and hopefully... He's a part of right now, but signing Dumba at two years, 3.75 million is an overpay. Signing Labushkin at 3.2, that's an overpay. I mean, uh, frankly, a massive overpay. Edmund Larson went to Toronto for 3.5. I mean, I would rather have Edmund Larson, I know he has some weaknesses in his play, but there's just a lot of question marks with really all three of these acquisitions. And Jim Nill said he liked Labushkin because he's physical and he's good on the PK. Well, I mean, the numbers don't really bear that out. You can look at the projected war. His PK is 3%. And this is the war and uh, player data. As EV defense, 43%. I mean, it's a lot of red. And, and and so with Matt Dumba, he played top pairing minutes or top four pairing minutes um, in Arizona. Yeah, he, he's skilled. He, he can move the puck. Uh, but he really had a, a tough year. And The Athletic put out an article and they put Dumba as one of the the worst contracts uh, of, of the day. There was a time when Matt Dumba was legitimately an adequate top four defenseman, but those days look over. His work in Arizona left a lot to be desired, and those hoping he could bounce back on a better team should know he was somehow even worse with the Lightning. There's a chance Dumba can bounce back with a strong star team, uh, Stars team in a lesser role, but expecting him to be their number four is expecting way too much out of him, and that's what they're going to expect. And forget all of the history. Just forget that. I, I frankly don't care uh, about that. Yes, he hit Pavelski and it was terrible. And I know it got a, a lot of people riled up. Forget that. I just, I I don't think he's a very good player at this point in time. I would love to be wrong. I would love to be wrong. But they're going to be asking Labushkin and Dumba to play pretty significant roles, it it feels like. And Labushkin was even more curious because 
you 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 overpay for him, but you you have you have that player already in Alex Petrovic. Like that's your guy. That's your your sixth, seventh defenseman that cost way less. He cost way less. And you 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 don't have to worry about him. You can just plug him and play. They didn't issue a qualifying offer to Neil Slunquist. They bring him back, which is not necessarily a bad decision, but We've already seen how that song and dance plays out. Are we now going to be getting, well, we trust our veteran defensemen like Labushkin and Smith over Lundquist. Like, are we going to go down that route again for another year? Uh, I almost feel bad for Niels to to perhaps have to succumb for that. And hopefully he can make a massive jump. Look, I, I still like Niels as, as a player. I just I feel like his time has almost run its course here. DeBoer doesn't seem to trust him. I mean, not seems he doesn't. And they're gonna hold out on him for another year. It's a, a prove it deal, but it just that that was kind of curious too, because is he just gonna be a healthy scratch now? 30 or you know, three games apiece, comes in, plays one, then he sits for you know, a couple weeks, it's just a lot of curious decisions. I would love, I would love to know how you're feeling currently. My my initial response to the question, have the stars taken a massive step back? I don't know if it's massive, but it feels significant. It, it feels worse pre-TANF. It, it really does, it, at least from my perspective. And, and I'll, and I'll, and and I I'll have the reserve to to write to rewrite my apology or excuse me my opinion <laughs> if I can get the words out I'm I'm flustered as you can tell um I'll reserve the fact that I can update my opinion at a later date because it is just July there's a lot of things that could still happen and maybe there's a trade in the works to to try to find a player but it felt it felt panicky. It felt panicky and, oh gosh, we, we have to go out and get somebody because they were unable to to come to terms with uh, one of the bigger names. And uh, albeit, it's, um, some of the contracts were huge. And I'll also say, it, maybe it's not time to, to overreact, but it's really hard and really frustrating to watch teams like Nashville that are so aggressive in your own division. They go out and get Stamkos, Shea, Marcia, so Wedgwood. I mean, bang, those are four impactful signings right away. Edmonton, they get Arvidsson. They keep Brown. You, uh, you, you look at other teams like even Vancouver with DeBrusque and Forber, and, and some of those contracts are a little bit scary. Washington, they make a trade to get Roy. They bring in Duheim. I mean, there's just teams that, that went out. And, and and were aggressive, and it felt like Dallas sort of got left behind. And maybe that's no fault of their own, but boy, I don't have a ton of confidence rolling into next season with Miro and Harley is is a heck of a nice first pairing. Then it's Lindell, Dumba, Labushkin, Lundquist, Petrovic. Right? It's just. I, um, I, I, it just, it was a very underwhelming day from the Dallas stars and it looks like their, uh, free agency has pretty much come to a close. We're still waiting for the official offer to, uh, to Thomas Harley. They have about 4.6 million projected cap space. So that'll probably be the bridge deal for Thomas Harley, which we should know in, in the next couple days. But they're trying to replace Tanev and Suter now with Labushkin, Dumba, and Smith. And that's my question is why why buy out Suter if if these were, were going to be replacements for almost just as much? That's that's the head scratcher for me. It just felt like you would have been in a much better position to to hold on to Suter. Tanev is Tanev. Like, you're not giving him six years. 
as much as he's a great player uh, at this point in time, it didn't make sense for Dallas. And he deserves it. And he'll be he'll be great in Toronto. Watch. <laughs> he'll he'll be great. But yeah, I just I, I think it was a poor day. A, a, a poor day, at least on the defensive side of things. And you just look at the numbers on on Labushkin and Dumba, and they're just they're not very pretty. They're, they're not very pretty. And, and maybe and maybe they'll have a bounce back season. Look, if if you get a chance to play with Miro or even Harley, maybe they uh they can they can play up to speed. But man, 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 three years. It, it wasn't two years to Labushkin either. I'm seeing it three years, three point two five million. It, it feels like they're pushing the problem down the line because. They have to prepare for the Stan Covens, the Borks, and the Johnstons, which 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 makes sense. But man, it feels like you may waste a really good year to be a contender. I, I just I don't see them contending in the Western at a high level. This is not panic. They're, they're still going to be a very good team. I'm not trying to to jump off the cliff here and be like, oh, this team's going to just completely miss the playoffs and completely tank that that's not what I'm trying to get at what I am trying to say is is it doesn't feel like a team that's gonna register 113 points like they did a season ago and there is a lot of time to get better so we're gonna have to revisit this but we have content for the next month stars fans oh we have content (laughs) there is a there's going to be a lot to discuss now with this back end. And to be honest, I, I'm going to put out a prediction. This feels like we're going to be constantly told that, no, it, it's okay. Like th- these are veteran guys. This is, this is a locker room that has, you know, a lot of, a lot of experience. They're going to be fine. Like we're going to figure it out. That That's what it feels like. We're going to be told this is competitive. And I just, and I just don't see it. I just don't see it right now. I just don't see it right now. And that's okay. That's okay. Hopefully I feel better in a month or two. All righty. Let's let's segue into to some of the the better moves on a Monday. Duchesne is back, Steele is back, and the stars find their backup netminder. We'll do that in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked On Stars is brought to you by FanDuel. I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games and the sports aren't sportsing like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is get the app, go on the app, and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. Go ahead and download FanDuel. It's available on your smartphone. It takes 30 seconds. It's on Google Play. It's on the App Store and get in on the action this summer. Make some money and join the baseball games. You have all the majors right around the corner. Not all the majors. The British Open number one. And make some money because this summer FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. On the lighter side of today's episode of Locked on Stars, the Dallas Stars have re-signed Matt Duchesne to a very, very team-friendly deal, and it looks like he's going to be a, another bargain at the price of $3 million, another one-year deal for Matt Duchesne at 33 years of age, and it's a no-brainer to come back at that number. And I know I had some reservations on Duchesne coming back this season because I thought he was going to warrant a pay raise, but he likes it here in Dallas. And for $3 million, man, no problem at all for a guy that is going to fill into your top six and can give you 60 to 70 points. Now I want to see you perform in the playoffs, but an excellent deal for the stars either way. Matt Duchesne comes back 
at uh, at three million dollars. That was one of the best deals the Athletic put out uh, on their uh, free agency deals, which uh, is no surprise. Great to to bring him back um, at a bargain. They also bring back Sam Steele. Uh, he was not issued a qualifying offer, but they offered him a one point two million dollar deal, so he got a decent pay raise uh, for next season. And he was obviously a very key part uh, of the fourth line for Dallas. He played the second most minutes on the kill as a forward for the stars. And he was very productive. He was a great player and good to, to get him back into the fold. He's going to be um, a, a great little Swiss army knife. I think he's another player that you can bounce up and down the lineup when guys maybe be hurt, or if you need someone just to, to fill in on a, uh, on, on maybe Duchesne's line or even a top line every once in a while, just to, to get some guys going. I think, uh, Sam Steele was a, uh, a great pickup, uh, once again for the Dallas, no issues there with bringing back Steele and Duchesne. And this is where I feel really comfortable about the stars. And I said this yesterday, look, the, the Fords are going to be fine. Yes. They are going to need Maverick Bork and Stan Coven to have really nice seasons, but for the most part, you're you're bringing the gang back together. It just feels like now you may have to outscore your problems, and it felt like they did that for large parts of last season until Tanev came into the fold. Now they may have to do that at a higher clip. Um, and maybe I didn't touch on this in the first segment, but I also need to state. Dallas didn't really have a choice to sign players like Dumba and and Smith and Labushkin because they missed out on others and they needed to just have some guys, right? So I I, I understand from, from that perspective as well, but boy, is that a missed opportunity, a huge missed opportunity. Anyways, back on the topic of hand. Yeah, you bring back Steele and uh, Duchesne. Uh, you have 12 Fords under contract currently. Smith walked. Um, and uh, you, you're going to rock with Tyler, Jamie, Rope, Robo, Marchment, Foxa, Duchesne, Dodonoff, Steele, Johnson, Stankov. And eventually Bork will get moved up. And there's your, uh, your 12 Fords. Who knows if they're going to be able to carry a 13th Ford. That's why I think maybe there's a possibility that someone gets moved and um, maybe Jim Nil is cooking something up. For for as much as I say on here, and Jim Nil we trust, and look, he's been fantastic. He's back-to-back NHL GMs of the year, but boy, this was not very good. Not very good at all. And um, hopefully he can find a way to uh to make this roster better. I just I don't think they got better. I do, I do. I think they took a step back. And um to answer many of your questions and this was posed to me by uh Michael Ubari, a wonderful Locked On Stars listener. So appreciate you Michael. You're wonderful, wonderful everydayer. He asked me, "Where do you see Dallas kind of fitting into the Central and, and West?" and you know, looking at teams like like Nashville, and, and this is obviously a bird's eye view, and we're talking about this just hours away after all these signings. So it, it doesn't always work out right. But you think Nashville, who was really good last year, I mean, they were a good team for what they had, and, and they added some pieces. Uh, they're going to make a step up. Edmonton sort of sort of going to be the same. My feeling is right now is, is Dallas fits in Somewhere around the 100 points, if if I had to give a prediction, just a very, very guesstimation, they're somewhere around, you know, three in the central. I think this causes them to drop back to like five or six in the Western Conference. And maybe that's an overreaction right now. But man, I just, I find it really, really tough to be competitive with what they're going to be putting out there on a daily basis on the back end. And their and their offense is going to carry them for a large part of the season. I don't necessarily worry about that, but I do worry about if if some guys don't don't have a great season. If you got some guys that are are, are struggling to find the net 
Like, what if Duchesne goes on long stretches? And who knows with Sagan and, and Jamie? He's had re- two really good consecutive seasons, um, but but he's on the last year of his contract. Like, you're just I I I feel like you're asking for a lot of things to to maybe go right. Um, and that's just that's just my general feeling. And this could be completely wrong, and you guys can come after me in the in the comments and destroy me here when we're when we're two months into the season. I, I mean, I still think they're going to be a good team. Um, I, I don't feel like they're just going to completely crater and, and miss the playoffs. I think they're going to be competitive, um, but I don't think they're going to be competing to win the West. Um, with that back end is um is my initial stance on the subject. Moving on, they also signed their backup goaltender. This is another great deal in Casey DeSmith. He was the backup for Vancouver last season. Posted 896 save percentage, um, a two point, I want to say eight six uh, goals against average in 29 games for Vancouver. They were priced out on Wedgwood, who got 1.5 million with. Uh, with Nashville. So they bring into Smith three years for a million dollars. That's, I mean, look, you, you lock down your, you lock down your backup goalie for the next few seasons. And then Otter will be uh, due for a, uh, uh, a nice lengthy pay raise here uh, at the end of 2020 or at the end of this uh, upcoming season. So um, good. You, you lock up to Smith, 32 uh, year old. He's obviously experienced. And now the Dallas stars have a little, American goaltending tand, uh, tandem there. So um, I, I think that was a, a great move. And and to Smith, Duchesne, and, and Steele were all really, really nice deals for the Stars. And I don't want it to bog down. Um, I, I don't want the other signings to really bog down the whole free agency. Um, look, I'm probably being a bit, uh, a bit tentative here and a bit... Uh, pessimistic because look it's you know three hours after all of this transpired so I just I feel a certain way about some things um but at the same time I I feel like I I have the responsibility to at at least throw that out there so let me know how you're feeling at this exact moment and I saw many of you on, on Twitter uh many of you were were engaging with me uh, let me know your, uh, your frustrations. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think many of you will, uh, agree with me on, uh, on some things. And, uh, now we just sit and hope that, uh, that everything will work out for the better. Okay. So that's day one. That's day one of free agency in the, uh, in the NHL. Let's just look at some other deals. I, I want to touch on some of these because holy cow some of these <laughs> the terms and numbers of these contracts were insane today and uh and we'll wrap up the episode here in just a moment so there was a ton of ton of term and money being thrown out there on this July 1st in the NHL, Sam Reinhart is going to stay in Florida. Gunsel got him a nice pay raise down in Tampa. Stamkos honestly got the bag for, for him being 35 years of age. Um, he finds a home in uh, in Nashville along with Marcia So, who uh, I, I believe got five years upwards of, uh, of $6 million dollars. Uh, Lindholm with Boston got a ginormous deal. I want to say it was seven by seven something. Uh, Lindholm got got paid, which I, I was a big shot. I'll be honest, there was a, a lot of money being thrown thrown around. I just it, there was some there was some teams that were not afraid to to spend a, a chunk of change. Uh, Anthony Duclair finds his well uh, finds his way to. Uh, to uh, the Islanders on a, on a pretty nice deal at, at five and a half uh, million dollars. Uh, I thought Carolina made a, a lot of nice moves uh, as as well. I think they got better as I mentioned earlier. Sean Walker re- resigned with them um, at a very team 
friendly deal. Uh, I mean, Nashville feels like the big winner in this all. I mean, gosh, they look like they're going to be really, really good with Stamkos and Marcia. So they add uh, Wedgwood as a backup. Uh, they, they went out and were aggressive. So congrats to, uh, to Barry Trotz, uh, and Nashville, the Leafs obviously signed Tanev. Um, the number for Tanev wasn't bad. Uh, that wasn't the issue at four and a half million. Just the, the six year term is tough and a no, and a no trade clause, a no move clause that, that, that could be some buyer's remorse there, but at the same time, a very, very, a very good player. They also signed Oliver Edmund Larson, as I mentioned at 3.5, uh, Yanni Hockenpah, um, as well, just signed a two year deal with, uh, with Toronto, the sharks went in on Alex Winberg two year deal worth $10 million. Um, and, uh, many, many more teams were, uh, were, were in the in the uh, in the thick of things. Uh, Chicago, I thought had a had a nice day. Uh, went out and got Martin Hook, um, who's a, a good player. Tara Vinen will will be back in in, in Chicago. Uh, look, Chicago, I thought made a, a lot of nice moves uh, as well. I mean, there was teams that just they felt like they got really really good. And um, some good fits. Bruins got Lindholm and Zadorov, which feels right. Montour goes to Seattle for uh, a big number at seven, upwards of seven and a half million. Um, he was a great player. I would have loved to see uh, in Dallas. New Jersey kept Nason. Uh, of course, they went out and got Pesci, my golden boy. Uh, Carrier re-signed with, um, with Nashville as well. I mean, a lot of names that we thought Dallas would possibly be in on just, just nothing, you know, Matt Roy, six years, 5.75 signed me up every day of the week. Uh, kudos to, to Washington. They traded, uh, they traded Nick Jensen and a, a third round pick, I believe to, uh, uh, Ottawa for, for Chikrin as well. Like massive, massive move from uh, from the capitals and and 5.75 six years for for Roy seems I mean brilliant frankly I would have loved for the stars to go out um and, and do that Patrick Kane re-signed with uh, Detroit Jack Campbell finds his way to Detroit as well a lot of moving pieces Sean Monty uh Sean Monahan got five years and five and a half to uh to Columbus which um feels a bit pricey uh, to reunite with uh, Goudreau, there was just there was some big money being thrown around. Um, Duclair got three point uh, five, excuse me. Um, uh, I think I said five and a half, but he got three point five for for four years. There was some um, there was some some money thrown around, and, and that's why I think Dallas w- w- was right in a lot of ways. That I would have liked them to overpay for better talent, though. Um, I because overpaying for a player like Dumba and Labushkin is where I, I really have the issues. I, I feel like you could live with overpaying for somebody like Roy or even Montour to, to some degree. And look, some of that doesn't fit in with what Dallas is trying to do because they have their own contracts they have to deal with. And, and Nil spoke to this multiple times. Like it's a hard cap. It, it's, it, it's, it's the life that they have to kind of teeter on nowadays but you know after after buying out Suter and then moving on from Tanev I I had this idea that after years and years of the star sort of just doing doing business kind of the same way right and, and just doing everything by the code was sort of going by the wayside by moving off from a guy like Suter because I didn't think that was going to happen that doesn't that wasn't really in his repertoire that's not how he did business and i thought man maybe maybe it's like okay we're going to start getting there's going to be some urgency here and that and it just didn't feel like there was any of that um and it wasn't for the lack of trying like i'm not trying to put that out there i i i guarantee you they were in on some of these guys it it just didn't happen which um is understandable look uh, the deals fall through all the time it, it's 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 not in the cards, but, but when you make moves like they did today, it's just, it's, um, it's hard to feel really confident about where, where the plan is because it didn't feel like there was much of a, a plan B to be frank. Um, 
And as I said at the beginning, <laughs> you have Stars fans wanting Suter back. I just, I feel like that's a perfect symbol of what transpired today. And we're going to leave it at that. We're going to leave it at that. This may be a bad, a, a tad bit ranty and a tad bit delusional. But hey, I, I had, I didn't get a lot of sleep. So I'm feeling maybe a bit delusional today. And um, that that is just my raw emotional feelings on day one of free agency. There were multiple other signings I'll get into later on this week. So be sure to stick around on Locked on Stars. We'll talk about out of, uh, all of them. And uh, we'll continue to discuss what went on. Woo! We got some content, boys. Ladies and gentlemen, we have some content for uh, for the next month. Thank you, as always, for the wonderful support. You guys are, are fantastic. Truly, you Locked on Stars listeners are um, are amazing for, for hanging out with us this offseason every single day. I hope I can keep it fresh. I mean, it's easy now with, uh, with some news to talk about, but uh, there's going to be some slow days here in the next few weeks, and we're going to continue to grind it out here on Locked on Stars. Well, that'll do it for today's episode. Enjoy your Tuesday, hopefully. Um, try not to let this affect your mood. I know I, I will try my darndest. Um, it's it's going to be okay, but we can also feel this way too. It's okay to, to be a bit distraught, maybe. A bit delusional. That's okay. Um, look, we love the stars. Want them to be better. Want them to make good decisions. And um, I, I don't know if necessarily that happened um, on a on a Monday. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you tomorrow. So long, Stars fans.